So first of all, I have a disclosure to make. I'm a member of the NCCN ESMO guidelines, and Dr. Yoshino invited me to the Pan-Asia, uh, you know, Pan-Asian guidelines conference. So that's probably why I was chosen to talk about the truth. Now, the truth, of course, is a very loaded uh, word. You know, what is the truth? And actually, I think what we're looking at here when we talk about sightedness is really the Rashomon effect. The Rashomon is fact when the same event is given contradictory interpretations by different individuals involved. And this is actually in deference to our Japanese colleagues, because Rashomon is a movie, and those of you who have not seen it, 1950, it's a great movie by one of my favorite directors, Akira Kurosawa, and it is actually archived as an international treasure in the webarchive.org. You can actually download it for free and legally. So if you have not seen it, please watch it. It talks about the truth. It's very philosophical, because the truth is, of course, biased by who watches an event. So what are we talking about here for the ESMO and interpretation of the sightedness data? And actually, we look at the same data, and we're all experts, and we have different perspectives. As you can see, as you could see, the updated kind of paper from ESMO showed each of the antibodies are standard of care in first line and left sided tumors. And in right sided tumors, each of the antibodies can be considered in first line if response is the goal. Now, the NCCN guidelines, again, I consider experts, of course, do not give a clear preference at this point in time for each of the antibodies or BEV in first line. And clearly, they recommend no EGF septic antibodies in first line, and potentially not in any line of therapy. That's a discussion that's ongoing right now. So you see, there's a Rashomon effect. What's the truth? So let me give you some of the data. So we have seen for quite, we have known for a long time that there is a prognostic implication of sightedness. Peter Dwyer's study, just looking at variations of five, if you 1,100 patients. Uh, trials conducted in the 1990s presented early 2000s, and you can see there's about a five-month difference in prognosis. It's actually interesting to see, just for a reference, historic reference, how far we've come with our overall survivors in metastatic colorectal cancer. There's a later line study, the Cetuximab last line study, that was actually also published before we really talked about sightedness in detail and looked at best supportive care versus Cetuximab, and you can see in a later line setting, the, eff the efficacy was really only related to left side tubers in cetuximab monotherapy. So there's some evidence, you know, that even in later lines of therapy, cetuximab's e efficacy is confined to left-sided tumors. Now, this is really what startled me in the sense that I completely missed what happened in 2014. I remember looking at the poster which the Heinemann group presented from Fire 3, and I looked at it and said, you know, this can't be true. Because what we saw here in the right upper hand corner was the overall survival data of the Fulfiri Cetuximab data for right, left sided and right sided tumors. And you can see there's a huge gap between these curves, and there's a difference of about 22 months of median survival. For the Bevacizumab arm in FIRE 3, the curves down here in overall survival are much narrower. This implied, okay, there might be some prognostic implication left versus right, but there might be a predictive implication, too, in terms of the cetuximab efficacy in left and right-sided tumors. And subsequently, of course, we have seen data and published data, full theory plus minus cetuximab, PFS, overall survival here, left-sided tumors, right-sided tumors. And you can see in left-sided tumors, see the nice split of the, for the addition of cetuximab to full theory. No hint of efficacy in, in right-sided tumors when cetuximab was added to uh, full theory. And clearly, this translates into the same differences in overall survival. And it's reassuring to see that the PFS data here translate into the PFS data in, overall, in the overall survival data on the left-hand side. Now, the FIRE 3 study is, uh, as you know, was actually the one that, for me, broke the sightedness discussion. Uh, first of all, of course, when you see here, we know, we have known this for quite some time, even in right-sided, in, in, sorry, in left-sided tumors, left-sided tumors here, no difference in progression-free survival between bevacizumab and cetuximab. Same here, perhaps a trend toward better efficacy for bevacizumab in right-sided tumors, but the split is really carried by left-sided tumors in favor of cetuximab, right-sided tumors, the curves are flipped, but sample size in the right-sided tumors is lower than in left-sided tumors, so there is no statistically significant difference. 
Now, 8405 is the largest individual trial with sightedness analysis. And again, here, looking at all trials, all arms combined, the fall theory, fall foxetuximab, bevacizumab, uh, arms combined, left versus right, a difference as expected, quite huge, more than a year. And, but more interestingly is, is when you break it down now by uh, regimen, of course, we talk about the predictive implication here. These are the, the, the data for cetuximab, left-sided tumors versus right-sided tumors, a difference of about 25 months in median survival. That is a very big difference. Now, for bevacizumab, you see the curves are much more narrow. There seems to be, bevacizumab seems to be agnostic in terms of sightedness. Now, the curves are interesting now here. There's still some prognostic implication, not as strong left versus right for bevacizumab. Now, when you look at the data here, you can interpret it in different ways. You can say from a European perspective, it's very clear that left-sided tumors should be treated with egf septa antibodies. That should be the default standard of care. And the U.S. perspective is right-sided tumors should, of course, not be treated with cetuximab or, by kind of inference, panitumab. So there's a different approach, in a kind of positive recommendation for one's interpretation of sightedness, a negative interpretation don't do in uh, the U.S. Uh, guidelines for the right-sided tumors. Then you already saw uh, Dr. Van Kutzen presented the data on sightedness and tumor response, and you saw that there was a trend toward higher response rate with a p-value of 0.089 for a higher response rate in right-sided tumors with each of septa antibodies. Now, my problem with this uh, back-of-the-envelope calculation is it's based on published and presented results, not individual patient data. It's a mix of first-line trials and second-line trials with or without bevacizumab. The level of evidence that this really can guide our treatment approaches and should guide guidelines is not very high. So we do acknowledge there's a difference in treatment approaches for sightedness, right versus left-sided tumors, and I think we have all acknowledged the guidelines need to reflect this. And of course, this has also implications for other future treatments with higher uh, percentage of patients with right-sided tumors being MSR high, BRAF mutant, and higher percentage of patients having HER2 overexpression left-sided tumors. So where are we? So the NCCN guidelines, as Dr. Vanuk already said, you know, they have already Im implemented in a consensus uh, statement the, uh, NC the uh, uh, sightedness, patients appropriate for intense therapy, Falfox and Falfiri combined with EGF septa antibodies only in RAS wild type tumors, uh, in left sided tumors only, and the transverse colony latest iteration was cut out. We don't know where this falls, left or right side. And this only applies for first-line treatment because the NCCN guidelines at this point in time, but this is a matter of discussion right now, leave it open whether patients in second or third-line treatments should receive each of septa antibodies in right-sided tumors. Now, we're really looking for the perfect candidate for EGF septa therapy. And I do believe we have a much better understanding who this patient is right now. We have a neg negative selection cascade of RAS mutation, BRAF mutation, V600D, likely HER2 amplification, and all these are more or less mutually exclusive. And then overlying is the sightedness. It's a further exclusion criteria, right-sided cancers. From what we see, and I'll come back to my truth statement as much as I can, uh, can further exclude patients and refine the patient population that should be treated with egf septa antibodies. And actually, I can fully, in full disclosure, I can say that I'm actually treating more patients now with first-line egf septa antibodies now that I'm more sure who these patients are that benefit from egf septa antibody therapy. So what is the truth? I showed you the ESMO and NCCN guidelines. For me, on the right hand side, I would never speak uh, we'd never uh, pre pretend that I'm the bearer of the only bearer of the truth, the Russian one effect. Watch the movie and you know what I'm talking about. But for left sided tumors, my feeling, my statement would be EGF septa antibodies are preferred. They're not necessarily the only default you'll have, but they are preferred. Bevacizumab can be used in select patients in first line therapy, and I'm mainly talking about those patients with low volume disease, elderly patient, where I consider even a fluoroprimidin plus bevacizumab, like capsidamine bevacizumab, along the lines of the AVEX trial, um, as one of the standards of care. You don't need necessarily 
to treat every patient with a doublet or a triplet plus an antibody. In right-sided tumors, I strongly believe there should not be an EGF septa antibody in first-line therapy. The response rate calculation are not solid for me, solid enough for me. And you know, even the p-value in this yeah, back of the envelope calculation was not even statistically significant. Response rate, if you really want response rate, use a triplet in appropriate patient, but even doublets, Falfox and Falfieri, they give you a response rate. But allow EGF septa antibodies in later lines of therapy, because I personally have patients who actually responded to EGF septa antibody therapy with panitumab or cetuximab, a single agent in right sided tumors, RAS, RAF, wild type tumors. So I don't believe we should eliminate this treatment option for our patients. That's my truth, and I'll be happy to discuss. Thank you very much.